Welcome back to Brash and Amos. If you just heard about uh, what events you might uh, find Ben and I at, one of them is going to be the Michael Ryan Patterson Foundation Dinner and Auction coming up on October 6th. We were with uh, Sung Om earlier talking about that. But now, fun friend and one of the smartest little nutritionists and health coaches I know is here with us, Sarah Adler. She's the author and creator of the popular Simply Real Health blog where she shares uh, weekly simple healthy recipes, uh, her love of good food, good health, and easy practical tips to make healthy living more approachable. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm so glad to have you back. And today we have um, a kind of a fun segment because what Sarah and I did beforehand was we she posted on her blog, we posted on Facebook, we asked people to submit questions that they were curious to learn about. Uh, and usually you kind of have some pre-planned stuff, but we uh, wanted to hear from the people today. Yes, we did. We had some good questions, too. Yeah, we have some really fun questions. I think we should dive right into them because we don't have a a ton of time here. But uh, this one, you know, speaking of Monday Night Football, Hank was talking about uh, (laughs) beer and college kids earlier. We got a question from uh, someone that said, how much does alcohol affect your health and nutrition goals? And then there was a follow up, actually, that I didn't uh, tell Sarah about, but said specifically, if I'm trying to lose the last 10 pounds, how does a weekend of heavy drinking affect me? Totally, yes. And, you know, I think it's a great question because it's actually, you know, what I do with people is much more about healthy lifestyle. So Mm -hmm. it's like it's not about being on a diet. And you obviously are going, you know, if you like alcohol, then, you know, most people do. And they do on the weekends. And it's not about cutting it out completely. But Mm -hmm. still being aware that, yeah, it's not the best. But for alcohol, it actually has nothing to do with. Um, calories, it's more about like the hormonal and the blood sugar response that it has. So, okay. so explain every that time, a little bit to yeah, us. Yeah. So every you're, time, you're thinking I had 10 beers over the weekend. That's a lot of calories. Right. And, and there is, you know, there are calories in it, but it's not only just about calories. So some people will rationalize it and say, well, I'll just have a smaller lunch or something so yeah. that I can have a glass of wine every single night. But, um, you know, from a response from your body, the problem is that every time that you have alcohol, It's a sugar, essentially, that goes into your bloodstream. So when you're getting ready to, you know, burn through your fuel that you have, otherwise, you know, known as fat and energy and all the calories that you eat, alcohol gets burned first. So if you, like, every time you have a glass of alcohol, a beer, a cocktail, whatever, it actually takes your body, like, you will not be able to lose fat for 24 hours after drinking because... Your body can't access your fat because it's just going to go immediately to the sugar because sugar is the first thing that burns. So from a perspective, you know, like losing the last 10 pounds, yeah, alcohol affects that um, because if you are drinking, even if it's like a glass every night, you still are kind of limiting your ability Mm -hmm, to be able to to lose that that weight. So if someone's maybe trying to think about, you know, concrete steps here would maybe you know, choosing a Friday or a Saturday night be a better idea? Or, to... you know, doing Friday and Saturday, that's fine. But, like, you know, Sunday through Thursday, just kind of chill out on that and not making it, like, a nightly habit or a routine. And the other part of that, too, is is your liver. And your liver is the most important organ in your body. It literally does everything and filters everything. So if you're kind of loading your liver down, like, more often than not, like, you know, more than just, like, kind of on the weekends or socially, then... You're going to have problems, um, problems like yeah. filtering, and you're just not going to feel good. Yeah. So It just sounds like, you know, the more opportunities you are drinking, the less time your body has to process and kind of burn the fat and stuff Absolutely. that you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, so picking a couple of days that, like, you do keep it clean and you do, you know, not drink during yeah. the week would definitely help from a weight loss perspective, too. Perfect. Well, that's, that's some great information. And this next question is interesting because... The paleo diet is what uh, we had someone ask about. And I've been hearing this a lot, people doing paleo diet or they have a couple days a week that they only eat paleo. And and one, can you explain to everybody listening what the paleo diet is? And maybe the someone asked specifically about the long-term effects of doing that type of diet. Yeah. So what the paleo diet is essentially is, you know, eating foods that have been for, around for a really long time, meaning like that we are genetically kind of dispositioned to digest certain types of food and not others. Yeah. So um, basically what it means is, you know, like fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and um, high quality meats, Mm -hmm. um, eggs, you know, more kind of the nutrient dense foods, but that there's a big kind of category um, in the grains category and even with some like lentils and, and beans and legumes. Yeah. That, um, 
on on the paleo specific diet that those are not necessarily not part of it good for you okay yes so i think actually for a diet i'm not a fan of diets in general but as a diet i think that's probably the best one out there mm-hmm. but it also doesn't take into account how people are different individually so there are some people that don't do well when they take out all forms of grain. Okay. It's just, you know, it has to do with kind of their genetics and their blood type, even um, their activity level. Some people need grains, but I do think there's a huge difference. There's good grains and then there's not so good grains. Yeah. So, so it kind of sounds like, um, it's you know, you're not going to have any negative long term effects from the diet, but you kind of have to take it on an individual basis and see how your body responds. Yeah. And, you know, a negative, you know, that maybe somebody was trying to get to with this question was um, that it, it, it can be more meat dominant. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to think about the source of your meat. So it's not just about like protein or carbs or, you know, keeping low carbs and high protein. If you're doing that, you have to think about where the animal comes from and what you're actually ingesting. And that could be the only place potentially where you would see some negative long-term effects is if you're really upping like your protein and your meat and your eggs, but those things are not coming from a good, healthy animal, then that could lead to some bad things down the road. Absolutely. We have time for two more. We got to, I thought we were going to get to so many more. (laughs) (laughs) I talk a lot. Sorry. So do I. So um, (laughs) we'll try to do two really quick because I wanted to get to some of these things people asked. Um, this was interesting. Um, what are some good foods to eat when you are pregnant? Yeah, so this is a great question. Um, so healthy fats, I think, are very important when you're thinking about getting pregnant or you are pregnant. Um, and then foods that are very rich in iron and folic acid um, because, you know, you're just kind of giving out a lot from your body and mm-hmm. you need to make sure that those things are replenished. So, like, the top foods I think to eat would be um, avocados, great kind of healthy fats. They help keep you satisfied. Even doing a whole avocado a day yeah. is like a really good Yum. idea. You put a little sea salt <laughs> and pepper on it. It's just such a good snack. Um, and doing some extra virgin organic coconut oil because mm-hmm. it's actually antiviral and antifungal. Plus it has, you know, the good healthy fats in it and mm-hmm. it makes things taste good. So yeah. if you're going to do like popcorn or you're cooking a stir fry, coconut oil is one of the best things you can use. And even from an antibacterial um, factor as well. Um, doing things like um, lentils are great, I think, because they have a lot of folic acid. They have um, B6 and a lot of iron in them, which when you're thinking about from like a blood perspective, iron's a great thing. And mm-hmm. a lot of women need more yeah. iron. Um, you hear that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And then just doing like some high quality fish oil, like a fish oil supplement, but definitely high quality. You get what you pay for. Mm-hmm. So don't you know, go running out to Costco and getting the super size, you know, thing of fish oil. You want to make sure it's clean because otherwise you would run the risk of more mercury yeah. in your body, which you don't want at all. Okay. We have one more and I'm going to ask because Sung said he wanted to, to, to know about this one. We had a question that's kind of, I guess, if you're, you know, gaining weight because you want to, not just as you're uh, eating for two, what's best to eat if you're trying to gain weight, I guess, if you're maybe a guy trying to bulk up yeah i was gonna say this question has to be from a guy it is i don't know of any girls that really ask that question um it was me yeah (laughs) um you know to gain weight i do think um there's something to be said for most people about more grains so it doesn't necessarily mean like you go out and you you know eat tons of cereal or you you know just eat subway all day like that's not gonna help that's gonna make you like fat And I'm assuming gaining weight in this context means like gain weight, you know, get bigger, get, you know, more muscular and you look, you look good. (laughs) Um, I do think so. Non-fat milk actually is one of the biggest things that will help you gain weight. So ladies, if you're looking to lose weight, you should stay away from the non-fat stuff. Definitely. Mm, Um, Trying to gain it, it probably will help a lot. That's what they give to baby cows and baby animals. And it, it does. There's a pretty high sugar content in there when you take out the fat. Um, so that's, that is a good thing to think about, but you know, also too, it's not about eating more junk, but just eating good food. You maybe just need more of it because you're a fast burner. So eating food that's actually substantial and going to fill you up potatoes and meat and avocados and good, like healthy fats and not as much like processed stuff. That's just going to, you will be hungry, you know, even a half hour later. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for uh, the tips and answering the questions, Sarah. Uh, Hopefully we can get you back sometime to do more of this because this was really fun. Yeah, thank (laughs) you. And thanks for everyone that 
that uh, wrote in with some Yeah, and we're questions. sorry if we didn't get to yours, but if you really do want Sarah to answer your question, I know she would be happy to. So they can either probably find you on Facebook or uh, go to your uh, website if you want to share with that with everybody. Yeah, and the website is simplyrealhealth.com. It's all one word. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter, and you can get in contact with me right there. All right, thanks, Sarah, yeah. so much. When we come back, we're all going to get back on the mics here and chat a little bit more. This is Heather. You're listening to Brashonomics. <laughs> 